know. Well, I never know. How old is he? He's 35. He's up by...
Good morning, and welcome to worship this morning on the first Sunday of Advent. I give a special welcome to those of you worshiping with us at home. And I have a few announcements this morning. Next Sunday, there will be a slideshow with Christmas trees and special music during both worship services. If you'd like to include a picture of the tree you have this year, or an advent wreath, or a tree that you had in past years that you'd like to share, please email Mary Huget by December 1st, and she'll arrange for your picture to be shared. You're invited to share in Pastor Jeff's retirement celebration on Sunday, December 12th at noon at the North Site, and that will be followed by a fellowship meal. Uh, due to current COVID-19 guidelines, in-person attendance will be limited, so please register in advance, and you can do that at the church website, or you can call the church office. Gift trees are displayed in the greeting areas at both sites, and these support local nonprofits by taking an ornament, or you can support local nonprofits by taking an ornament from the tree, and there's an item that is noted on the ornament. This one says, Activity Craft Kits for Children for Harbor House. You can go and purchase that and then bring the gift back unwrapped and give it, put it under the tree with the ornament on it, and that will be sent to the charity for which it was purchased. Uh, those need to be back by December 19th. In the back and in the gathering area, there is an Advent devotional booklet that was written by First English members, and we thank them for their work in putting this together. It's also available online for those of you with us at home, or if you aren't able to pick up a hard copy. We hope that this will enhance your Advent season. At this time, I'd like to invite Barry Hoff, Vice President of the Congregation, to come up for the final announcement. Good morning, everyone. The Congregational Council has called a meeting of members of First English Lutheran Church on Wednesday, December 8th at 7.15 p.m. after the Advent Vespers service. The meeting will take place both online and in person here at the downtown site. We will be voting on accepting the recommendation of the call committee to fill the position of Faith Life Pastor. You will be receiving a letter this week with information on the candidate and also how to participate in the meeting. Thank you. I would ask you to rise as you are able. In the Spirit's embrace, you are loved, welcomed, and wanted here. We are loved, welcomed, and wanted here. And as the first Sunday in Advent, I'd like to invite the Toplin family up for the lighting of the first candle. Just as Jeremiah spoke to a nation in despair, we see a world suffering and struggle with our own challenges, wondering, how long, O Lord? We light this candle as a sign of that expectant hope.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God of restoration, when the Israelites were exiled, you invited them to accept a new normal. Show us how to move forward when it seems all is lost. Amen. Be seated. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. 
plant gardens and eat what they produce, take wives take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city or have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you. And do not listen to the dreams that they dream, for it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them. Says the Lord, for thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you. And I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Well, Kirsten is still not feeling well, and so I am going to do the children's time. I hope there are some children here today. And if not, or if you want to join in, anyone can answer the questions that are posed here. For children's time, we're going to learn about Jeremiah. He was a prophet about 600 years before Jesus and about a hundred years after last week's lesson with Isaiah. If you remember the picture of the northern and southern kingdoms, by this time the northern kingdom had already been destroyed, and Jeremiah is writing to the people from the southern kingdom who had been forced to leave their homes to live in Babylon. Babylon was a very powerful country that had, been, or that had beaten them in war. Babylon was their enemy. Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. Do you know what weeping is? It's crying. There's, there's someone crying. <clears throat> Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet because he was always giving bad news. Have you ever had to tell anyone bad news? Anyone had to tell bad news? You can go ahead and speak up. How about that someone's sick? Or that someone can't come for Thanksgiving? How does that bad news make you feel? Sad? Upset? Bad? Jeremiah felt bad too. See, he, he feels bad. He felt bad because he had to tell the king of Judah that they were at war with the soldiers from Babylon and that it would not end well. They would lose the war and they would be sent to live in Babylon for a really long time, for 70 years. That's probably older than grandma. There was another prophet. Hananiah was his name. The king liked Hananiah because Hananiah told the king what he wanted to hear. He said, everyone will be back home in a couple of years. The problem was that it wasn't true. People could not plan or be prepared for the long stay they would have. Jeremiah told the king, even if it seems like bad news, God is with you and is working in your life. He said, I know the plans I have for you, plans for your good, plans to give you hope. 
It's more important, rather, is it more important to hear the truth than to hear a lie that covers up the truth? No, because when we know the truth, we can prepare for the future. There are things that I want to hear. I want to hear that I will live a long and healthy life. What if I were to say, I am going to live till I am 90 years old? Is that the truth? What is the truth? The truth is you don't know how long you will live. So that means I should enjoy each day that I have. What else do people want to hear? How about that you won the lottery? Or that Santa will be coming and bringing you everything you wanted? Either of those things might keep you from working or from being good. It's time to hear and tell others the truth because it helps us prepare with hope for the future and reminds us God is always with us. Okay, now it's time for noisy offering. Come and bring your offerings up to the noisy bucket. And those of you online, feel free to use the QR code for any donations that you would like to make. There's no noisy buckets today. Oh, here comes some.
Please stand as you are able for the offertory prayer. Even when we are lost or broken, we know that healing comes when we reach out rather than isolate, give rather than withhold. So we bring our offerings to you in the hope that abundant blessings come not only for us, but for those who benefit from these gifts that we offer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. At this time, I ask that you gather your communion packets uh, that you have with you. For those of you here uh, in the sanctuary this morning, also those who are worshiping online at home, uh, please have your elements ready. We will all commune together after the singing of the Lord's Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. be seated. You may take your communion fellowship cups and remove the upper plastic to get to your wafer. The body of Christ given for you. Removing the second foil for the grape juice. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us just take a moment to reflect on the reading from the day from Jeremiah. 
Surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Please stand for the post-communion blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another. And at home, you may also enter in messages uh, on the chat. Peace be with you. Also at this time, families are uh, excused to go for the family faith exploration time. And please rise as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We have been waiting, we have been watching. And we've been wondering, when will it end? When will we return from our exile back to the life we once knew? When will we be speaking of a post-pandemic world? And today, it would seem as though we are hearing from many prophetic voices giving us divergent points of view when it comes to perspective on the pandemic. With so much information and misinformation being spread around, which voices are we to listen to? Which voices are we to tune out? Which voices are we to trust? It can be difficult to discern when we are caught in the middle of the chaos and confusion. It is from this pandemic predicament that perhaps, perhaps, we all can relate to the life of the Judean exiles taken into Babylon, Babylonian captivity under the rule of King Nebuchadnezzar. Those exiles who were similarly caught up in the chaos and confusion of their condition. After a failed revolt against their captors, the Judean exiles were deported from Jerusalem and resettled behind enemy borders, some 400 miles away. They were far, far from their homeland, in the last place that they wanted to be. With COVID numbers once again on the rise as we enter into the season of Advent, 
we too find ourselves in the last place that we want to be. A place that's been fraught with anger, distrust, and fear. A place where we may find our position at odds with that of our neighbors. As we attempt to navigate our way toward the celebration of the nativity of our Lord. While our time-honored traditions and religious rituals of the season sometimes can feel like they've been turned upside down. Joyful and hopeful facial expressions covered up with swaths of cloth. Hugs and handshakes kept under wraps. Community meals once served on banquet tables now mobilized and distributed to Individuals living in isolation. Indeed, this is the last place where we want to be. With potential roadblocks at every turn, we lament, Lord, which way do we go? For the children of Israel, their sense of direction came by hearing the word of God spoken through the prophets. And at the time of the fall of Jerusalem in 587 BCE and the subsequent exile, no prophet loomed larger than Jeremiah. Jeremiah will always be considered a prophetic giant right alongside the prophet Isaiah who came before him a century earlier. Jeremiah was memorable because he had no problem playing his prophetic role. And while we heard Peter share in the children's message this morning that yes, he struggled internally with giving and bearing bad news, he was still faithful to his role. He wasn't afraid to deliver God's word of disappointment and warnings to God's people even though it hurt inside. And while this may not have made him one of the most popular prophets, he certainly was one of the most memorable. Even walking around the city with a yoke around his neck to symbolize the position that the children of Israel had placed on themselves in their unfaithfulness and failure to listen to God's word spoken through the prophets. Well, Jeremiah remained in Jerusalem with the remnant of the Israelites that were allowed to stay. Many others were sent away to live and die in Babylon. So perhaps it would be helpful to hear what happened right before the reading of Jeremiah's letter to the exiles to help us better understand the certain set of circumstances and context in which that letter was written. In chapter 28 of the book of Jeremiah, we hear from the prophet Hananiah, who makes a public proclamation in the presence of the priests and all the people, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon, Within two years, I will bring back to this place all the vessels of the Lord's house, which King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon took away from this place and carried to Babylon. I will also bring back to this place King Jeconiah, son of Jehoiakim of Judah, and all the exiles from Judah who went to Babylon, says the Lord. For I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon." Now, Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, whose love and lament for the people were legendary, had something to say about Hananiah's bold proclamation, essentially telling Hananiah, I hope and pray you're right, but time will tell. In a dramatic response, Hananiah removed the wooden yoke from Jeremiah's neck and broke the yoke in two. It was quite a remarkable scene. 
You see, historically, the prophets of Israel did not go about the business of spreading sunshine and roses upon the people. In fact, most of the time, the prophets were despised for sharing their countercultural messages of God's warning for the sinful, idolatrous, self serving actions and behaviors of the community. Hananiah's rosy outlook for the exiles just didn't seem to line up with reality. As we move to the end of the chapter, when some time had passed after Hananiah's dramatic breaking of the yoke that had been around Jeremiah's neck, God instructs Jeremiah to deliver the following message to Hananiah. You have broken the wooden bars only to forge iron bars in place of them. I have put an iron yoke on the neck of all of these nations that they may serve the King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, and they shall indeed serve him. I have even given him the wild animals. Jeremiah continued, Listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, and you made this people trust in a lie. Therefore, says the Lord, I am going to send you off the face of the earth, And within this year, you will be dead because you have spoken rebellion against the Lord. And in that same year, in the 17th month, the prophet Hananiah died. While we may have believed that the pandemic would be over by now, here we are still living with much uncertainty and a plethora of polarizing perspectives. As children of God, what are we to make of our current conundrum? Once again, we can hear the word of the Lord spoken through the prophet Jeremiah echoing through eternity. Living in Babylon, the last place that they wanted to be, living among the Babylonians, the people they despised most and didn't want to have anything to do with. The exiled children of Israel are instructed to build homes and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce, take wives and have sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. And seek the welfare, the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile. And pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare, you will find your welfare. In other words, in the middle of this chaos and confusion of their reluctant relocation, they were to plan on being there for the long haul. Not only that, but they were to refrain from resisting their predicament and from being hostile to their Babylonian hosts. Instead, they were called to be good neighbors, to be hospitable to them, to work in cooperation with them, and to help them to flourish. In the flourishing of the Babylonian community, exiles would find and experience their own human flourishing. So is this any different for us today? We are not where we want to be right now. The pandemic rages on. Political divisiveness is pulling us apart when we need to be pulling together. Polarizing perspectives on vaccines, masks, and physical distancing persist. And yet, It looks like we could be in this for the long haul. Life moves on. And amidst the chaos and confusion, God's word emerges. God's word from Jeremiah, For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm. To give you a future with hope. These are the words recorded in Jeremiah's letter that we are familiar with. These are words of promise. These are words of compassion. These are words of hope. 
And these words are not directed at us individually, but communally. God is with us. God is with all of us in the midst of our suffering and our sorrow. Nearing the end of his time walking the earth, Jesus reassured his disciples that he had their welfare in mind and the welfare of all the people. Sharing with them these words as recorded by St. John. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. So when we find ourselves amidst the chaos and confusion, when we continue to wonder, watch, and wait, asking, how long, O Lord, how long? Let us remember these words of assurance from Jesus and take heart in receiving the peace of Christ that surpasses all human understanding. Let us also remember the words of promise and hope from the Lord spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. God incarnate in the person of Jesus Christ has already come to be with and among us. And by the grace of God is coming back again. In the meantime, led by the Holy Spirit, let us live fully in the peace, hope, and love of Christ building, planting, raising families, doing whatever we can to put the needs of our neighbors and the welfare of the community first. Even when we might find ourselves in the last place we want to be. Amen. Please rise as you are able for the reading of the Nicene Creed. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one God, Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us this week from harm and danger. We ask that you keep us in the week to come from sin and all evil, so that our lives and actions might please you, comforting God hear our prayer. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, for a time to pause in gratitude 
the blessings of our lives. We thank you for family, for food and shelter, for friends and neighbors and our church community, especially our ELCA bishops, Elizabeth Eaton and Ann Edison Albright, for Pastor Trent Ziedler, who was able to join us this morning, and for the baptism of Vivian Maria Michael. Comforting God, hear our prayer. Lord, there is more suffering in the world than we can sometimes comprehend. And yet you hold us all in the palm of your hand. Pour out your healing spirit on all who cry to you. Spend, send a special blessing this day to the families of Tyler Anderson, Bonnie Luke, Ole Olson, Sue Olson, those injured and killed in the Waukesha Parade tragedy, and all who have joined this week in the church triumphant. Comforting God, hear our prayer. We come before you now lifting up our brothers and sisters who are named on the prayer list in our bulletin, those serving in the military, living their call overseas, and in need of your healing, peace, and wholeness. Provide your loving care to those we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Comforting God, hear our prayer. We have asked, and you have heard, Lord, surround all those for whom we pray with your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.